The Canon EOS R10 is Canon's newest APS-C mirrorless camera featuring its first RF mount. We think that this is the best value camera ever created and here's why. Hey guys, this is Nirupam from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Now, I wanted to start this video by saying, over the last two years, I've been privileged enough to shoot some of the top underwater cameras on the market, including the Sony a7S III, the Sony A1, the Canon R5, uh, I'll even consider the Nikon Z7 II to be up there. However, uh, this is the most excited I have been about a camera since I started shooting, and the reason for that is because it makes underwater photography and video accessible. So this here is the Canon R10. It's Canon's first APS-C RF mount uh, mirrorless camera. And I only have good things to say about it. Like I'm pretty astonished with what I've come back with. I've been shooting it for a month. I've shot it in La Paz, Mexico on my underwater photography workshop. I shot it in Florida, uh, diving with some uh, bull sharks and doing some muck diving. And then I've shot it here in the great Pacific Northwest in some cold water with some low light to really put it to the test. And it's passed all my tests. Um, now, I'm not saying this is the best camera in the world, but what I'm trying to say is this is the best value camera ever created. Uh, for the body itself, it's only $980. The lenses that go along with this are APS-C lenses, so you can expect you know, roughly $400 for a Tokina 10-17, to which is one of the most popular fish eyes. Uh, the kit lens is especially very cheap in that uh, comes in a package with this camera. And the housing. Uh, the housing itself retails for $1,050 from Ikelite, uh, but there are packages out there that we offer here at Blue Water Photo that include the camera, the lens, the zoom gear, the port, the housing for $2,500. And we're talking almost professional level image quality here. Uh, I would actually stretch that and say professional level image quality in a starter system. Um, and when you look at it compared to a compact system, you're only probably paying uh, anywhere from a few hundred to a thousand dollars more uh, for one of the best systems on the market that you can grow with, that you can keep shooting, um, and that really doesn't begin to get outdated. I mean, this camera is going to be a good camera for a while. But I can harp all day about how great this camera is. Let's get into it. Let's look at this camera uh, from a technical perspective. Uh, let's see how it did underwater. You guys already saw the video. You guys saw some sample photos. I mean, it's pretty clear. It's an impressive little camera. Uh, and let's talk about it. So the sensor on this camera is an APS-C sensor. It's a 24.2 megapixel sensor. Now, an APS-C sensor or crop sensor is not a full frame sensor. It's cropped about 1.5 times smaller. Uh, now that makes the camera cheaper, but it also means you have reduced dynamic range and you have a deeper depth of field, which means more of your image is actually going to be in focus and it's gonna be a little bit harder to get those like nice blurry background photos that you see in professional camera shoots. Uh, now that being said, underwater you don't necessarily need that, so there are some benefits to having a crop sensor. Now, crop sensor cameras, like this Canon camera, can actually be used with full frame lenses as well. There's just a crop factor, so again, it's gonna be 1.5 times zoomed in. Uh, the camera features an RF lens mount. You can see it's got a really large 
lens mount with a very short flange distance. This means the corners on your photos with RF lenses are gonna be amazing, and they are. Now, not all uh, cameras have a lot of RF lenses available for them, this one included. Uh, it's an APS-C camera, so there's only a couple RF APS-C lenses out there so far. So the camera comes with a uh, 18 to 45 millimeter lens. As the kit lens, it works great. Um, if you want to do both kind of wide angle and macro, it's a good mid-range lens, it's good for portraits. Uh, but I would recommend dedicated wide angle and macro lenses as well. Now that being said, you can get an EF to USR adapter that adapts EF lenses onto this RF camera. So if you are a former Canon shooter, you can go ahead and shoot your Canon EF-S and EF lenses, which means the Canon EF 100 millimeter macro, uh, the Tokina 10 to 17, and a lot of other beloved underwater lenses can be used with a camera. Uh, now, my favorite lens in particular was the Canon, I mean, was the Tokina 10 to 17 lens and the Canon EF 100 millimeter macro. Now, Eichlite is actually modifying the housing a little bit as we speak to work with the RF 100 millimeter macro lens. What I have here is a prototype. Uh, there are not other housings from other manufacturers available, so we're going to be talking about the Eichlite housing today. Um, and there have been some improvements, so bear that in mind when you're looking at uh, this system altogether. So let's talk about this underwater housing because I think it's really an important part of the system itself. Uh, since there's only one housing available, we don't really expect other manufacturers to make more housings. It's really important to talk about this one. Um, now, this is a prototype housing, like I said, uh, but it's fully functioning. It has full control of the camera, and the new production level housings also have full control of the camera. Uh, it's quite small, I mean, really small. Uh, if you compare this to my full frame housing, which I myself own, so this is my Nikon Z6 housing, that's a big size difference. I mean, when I shoot uh, and I go on a, on a trip, I'm cutting about, you know, seven to 10 pounds when you consider the housing size, the dome ports, the lens sizes, everything all together, I'm cutting out that weight. And I've actually been finding myself leaving this, <laughs> this housing at home. I don't need to keep this. I could give this right back to uh, Eichlet if I want to just shoot my normal system. I've been leaving this at home because the shore entries here are tough and I'd rather have something a lot smaller. Um, if the image quality is almost or just as good. Now, the housing has two latches on it to open and close it. It has uh, dials on the back and on the top in order to control the two dials that are on the camera for aperture and shutter speed. It's got buttons that fully control the camera. And uh, more importantly, it has a hot shoe that plugs into the camera's hot shoe mount so that you can use sync cords with the housing to fire your strobes. Now, sync cords are really cool because uh, that electronic signal gets sent immediately to your strobes, which means every time you hit that shutter button, your strobes know that they can fire. Now, they might not fire due to recycle times, but you're getting the absolute fastest speed possible out of your strobes. Now, the housing has the option to come with a vacuum valve. Now, the vacuum valve is included, but you do have to buy the pump separately. Uh, so it is vacuum sealed, and you can do a test to make sure your housing is sealed before you get in the water during every dive. Now, probably my favorite thing about the housing is something that's not available on the prototype yet. Uh, when I was shooting it, I spoke to Eichlid and I was like, look, hey, you really do need a back button focus system so that you can do back button focus on the housing. And lo and behold, they are adding one. So there's gonna be a little lever here and a lever here for your shutter. So you're gonna be able to just hit your back button focus and hit your shutter, which makes it super, super ergonomic. Uh, and then my second favorite aspect of the housing is the fact that you can actually add a TTL converter from Eichlite if you do have an Eichlite strobe. So this TTL converter just plugs right into the housing and you get really accurate results. So all my photos that you saw were taken with the DS230 strobes and the TTL converter. Um, so you can see that the exposures were accurate and quite nice. Uh, this here is the DS230 strobe. Now this is Eichlite's top of the line strobe. And you know, if you're looking at an entry level system, you might be thinking, well, do I really need a top of the line strobe to get into it? Uh, it's yes and no. I mean, when I look at underwater cameras, I'm really thinking, you know, you should invest in lighting first 
because lighting is what changes your photos. The camera, the housing, that comes second. The lenses are also important, right? You wanna think about things that actually change the photos. In my opinion, you can take the same photo from each camera. It just looks slightly different when you're post-processing and then when you come out uh, with your final product and you print it. So you can get the top of line strobe, but if you don't want to, we actually have a package uh, with a YST3. Um, which is only $34.99. So that is an awesome deal for a strobe, housing, camera, everything all together, $34.99. But if you do save a little bit of money on the camera and the housing, going for the highest end strobes with the TTL can be really rewarding. Uh, you saw it in my shark photos. It's just hit after hit after hit um, with this camera. So that's been pretty awesome. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the camera itself and how it does for underwater photography. Uh, now, one of my favorite things about the R10 is you have these cool new features that have been introduced and just added into the R10, uh, and it actually makes it perform even a little bit better than the R5, the world's probably most popular underwater camera in some respects. So, um, talking about the autofocus. The autofocus has a lot of the same features that you can find in the R5. It has excellent autofocus tracking. Uh, you can tell that the processor is a little bit slower, so it's not quite as sticky as the R5 might be, uh, but it does an excellent job, and it was my main focusing mode uh, in all my photography. And you saw it hit those sharks right on the eye. It was pretty awesome. Now, what the R10 actually does better than the R5 is it identifies subjects better. So, I actually noticed that it was able to find animal eyes and animal shapes a lot better than the R5 can. So even if I was maybe missing with the shape, it would see the shark over in the corner and be like, oh no, it's trying to hit the shark. So it would move the focus box over the shark and then it would track the shark. And it might not do the eye, but it could at least find the shape. Uh, in a lot of cases, it did find the eye. In a lot of macro cases, it does the eye a lot better. So I was really impressed with the autofocus system. Uh, like, so impressed. I can't believe a $980 camera has an autofocus system like this. Um, and I just, it, it, you know, it really, it, it comes back to point and shoot, right? Uh, compact cameras might be called point and shoot cameras, but this is a true point and shoot camera. You point it, it'll hit the autofocus. It hits the lighting if you have a TTL converter and you've got a shot. And uh, it just makes diving fun, right? It becomes more about composition, about, you know, how you, or what you're taking a photo of rather than how you're taking that photo. So let's say you've got a bunch of subjects that are just swirling all around you. You've got marlin and bait balls and sardines, like actually I did. Uh, you can actually shoot up to 15 frames per second with this camera uh, using the mechanical shutter and 23 frames per second using the electronic shutter. Now, you can really only do that if you don't have strobes. Most strobes won't be able to keep up, but that's a really impressive shooting speed. Uh, so if you are the type of person who ambient light photography, maybe you do a lot of bait ball shooting, uh, this is an awesome, awesome camera for that. And finally, let's talk about something that I was actually a little surprised I'd be talking about. Let's talk about battery life. So this camera is rated to, I think about 430 shots per battery. Uh, that's pretty wrong. It's actually way, way longer. So I was able to easily get four dives, sometimes five dives out of this camera and still have 50% battery life. Now, some of those dives, I was actually uh, shooting, you know, one or 200 photos. So we're talking five, 600 photos and I'm only at 50%. I never actually drained the battery life all the way down. Uh, I did use it three days in a row and again, it, it did fine. I was still at 50%. I was doing about one or two dives up here in the Northwest, it gets cold. Now, if you did try to drain this down, I would say you're probably good about six to eight dives, probably more on the eight dive side of things, uh, which means, you know, as long as you are charging this camera every day after you're diving, you're good to go. And I was really happy to see that. Now, one of the questions that uh, kind of influences battery life is should you use the LCD or the EVF? So uh, mirrorless cameras come with an electronic viewfinder and an electronic viewfinder allows you to look through the viewfinder, uh, see your images, see your previews, see your settings and everything that you really need. Uh, now you can do the same thing with the LCD and unlike a DSLR, the autofocus speed is going to be the same through the viewfinder as it is the LCD. So most people kind of like to look through that viewfinder. Well, on this camera, viewfinder is a little bit small. It's only 2 million dots. Again, this is an entry level camera. Uh, so what I like to do with this camera is I actually just shot through the LCD. I was totally fine. It's more than enough real estate to see what's going on. So now that I've gone over photography, let's jump over to underwater video. 
Uh, I was surprised. I, you know, normally entry-level cameras, they're great photo cameras. Video, you usually have to pay a little more. Uh, this camera is a great video camera. So it can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second, but that's with a 64% crop. Now you do get reduced quality with a crop and it's overall going to change your field of view. But if you're a macro shooter, that crop can be nice. And same if you're a wide shooter, it's really not the end of the world. I did some 4K 60 video of some sharks. It turned out pretty cool. Uh, it's not, again, the best camera ever for video, but it does really well. Now, why would you want to shoot 4K 60? If you slow down that 60 frames per second to 30 frames per second, that's slowing it down two times, you get a lot more stable video. So if you're in really crazy conditions where you're moving around a lot and you're shooting handheld video, you're going to need 4K 60. Uh, now the 4K 30 is actually really amazing quality, so if you do have a tripod, that 4K 30 is actually oversampled from 6K, which adds a bunch of detail to your video. So the 4K video we were getting was pretty detailed, and that's pretty cool. Now what the R10 doesn't have is Canon log recording, so if you want that, you should take a look at the Canon R7. Uh, for those of you that don't know, log recording kind of helps you get a little bit of extra dynamic range during your post-processing. And finally, let's talk about noise. So this is an APS-C censored camera, right? And when you're shooting video, generally you wanna be able to shoot at higher ISOs. Well, overall, for both photo and video, I found you know it's not super nice going above ISO 800. Uh, for video, you can push it a little higher, but for photos, definitely not. Um, now, the noise is pretty fine grain. So with photography, you can really take it out. And I did shoot ISO 800 and sometimes a little higher at times. Um, but that is the one downside of getting an APS-C camera versus a full frame uh, like an A7S III or an R5. And finally, let's wrap up this video with a short conversation about the Canon R10 versus its close sibling, the R7. Now, the R7 is a few hundred dollars more expensive for the body, and it's actually quite worth the upgrade uh, because of a few reasons. The R7 has in-body image stabilization, which really helps you get uh, nice crisp photos if you're shooting at low strider speeds. Uh, it also has log video, so if you're a video shooter, you might want to consider the R7. And it has 4K 60, not cropped. Um, so if you're a video shooter, the R7 is a great choice. Now, if you're a photo shooter, I'd say for now, the R10 is probably the best choice. Um, the R7 has a little bit more resolution, but if you stuff in all that resolution on an APS-C sensor, you are adding noise. And I think 24 megapixels is really the sweet spot. Another reason I would choose the R10 for photography uh, is the housing options available. This is a really inexpensive housing option. It's a small housing, it's a DLM housing. Eichlite told me that they're not quite sure yet if that R7 is gonna be a DLM or if it's gonna be a larger dry lock housing like my old housing here. Uh, now, there is an R7 option from Nauticam, which we also sell at Blue Water. So if you're interested in the R7, totally reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you about the differences between the R10 and the R7 and what your options really are for what you want to do. But all in all, I would say the R10 is truly for an underwater photographer that is really looking for a system that they can grow with, that they can learn with, um, that they can do a little bit of both photo and video, and that they just really need the best value on the market because this is it. If you want the best quality photos and the best quality video possible for the cheapest price, you're not gonna get better than the R10. So with that, make sure you like and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, we have Black Friday sales on the R10. It's about um, $100 off for the camera. That translates to a lot of stuff. Uh, some of the packages are even more discounted. Um, so if you have any questions at all, make sure you reach out to us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. Uh, drop any questions you have in the comments below. We'll answer them. Uh, again, like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And with that, we will see you out there shooting with the R10. I mean, look at this thing. It's super fun to shoot and I can't wait to get it in people's hands.